Hey guys, welcome to the part 2 of module 1 implementation. So in the first part of this implementation, we have already set up the Cloud9 IDE and we cloned the repository into that IDE as well. Now let's do the implementation related to static web hosting. So here's my Cloud9 IDE and I have cloned AWS Modern Workshop application repository. Now let's use the terminal to cd into AWS Modern Application Workshop folder. Now our first step is to create a S3 bucket. We can go to AWS console and create it like services and S3 but uh, we are not going to do it manually because we have already done that in earlier videos. Right now we are focusing on best practices so one of the best practices is to automate AWS infrastructure creation by using CloudFormation scripts or AWS CLI script. Now in the guide it's already provided how to do it using AWS CLI. Let's use AWS CLI and use AWS S3 make bucket command. Now here's the script AWS S3 make bucket. Then we have to give a name, a unique name this must be. So let's copy this one. In the IDE, I will paste this as it is. And instead of replace me bucket name, I will give it a new bucket name. Make sure this is unique. MJSON misfit web. You should have a different unique name. So if it is successfully created, you should get this message make underscore bucket this. We can verify that if you go to S3 here and search for that MJSON misfit web. Here we go. So it has created the bucket which is a totally empty bucket. And in the theoretical lecture, we explain this bucket that we create on S3 is private by default. If you want to provide access to anyone else, to any object inside this bucket, we have to set up access control by using two main methods. First one is resource based policies and the other one is user based policies. So in our guide, it says we have to provide a bucket policy for our cloud fund distribution to access our S3 bucket. Now in the diagram, you can see our S3 bucket is accessed by CloudFront. So we have to allow CloudFront to access our S3 bucket by using a bucket policy. So you can find that bucket policy at this location. So let's go there in the IDE in the module one because we are in the module one inside AWS CLI should see website bucket policy dot JSON. So bucket policy is a resource based policy. So we mentioned there are two resource based policies, bucket policies and access control list. So this is one of that. And we use bucket policies for granular access granting or denying. And if you look at this bucket policy, it has some set of statements. So one of the statements is an allow policy. So it allows S3 get object that means reading an object from S3, which S3 bucket. There we have to replace the S3 bucket name, which of course MJ Zone Misfit Web. Just copy that and replace here. So we are allowing reading object from MJ Zone Misfit Web bucket, which we just created. To whom? To the principal. The principal is the entity this policy will be applied to. So principal could be AWS user or a service. And in this case, it is origin access identity. Now we already discussed this. What is an OAI origin access identity? Now OAI, if you can remember, it is the CloudFront user. You can create a CloudFront user and allow only that CloudFront user to access our S3 bucket. So in here, we have to replace the origin access identity ID here. With that, if we apply this policy to a S3 bucket, it will only let CloudFront user or basically the CloudFront to read from the S3 bucket, not anybody else. Even the direct access to S3 bucket, even though they know the object ID in the S3, they cannot access. Outside access is totally prohibited, but the CloudFront can only read the items. So let's move on with the guide. Now it says first we need to create an origin access identity because we have to replace the origin access identity ID there, right? So where can we find origin access identity? So you can easily find the origin access identity if you go to CloudFront distribution here. So this is the main page of CloudFront distribution. On the left side, you have distribution. Somewhere down the security category, you will find origin access identity. So it says an origin access identity is a CloudFront specific account that allows CloudFront to access to your restricted Amazon S3 object. So let's create an OAI. You can do it here, but as for the best practices, we are using AWS CLI. CLI command, I will copy it here. 
and go back to my IDE, paste it in. So let's go through the command. It's AWS CloudFront, create CloudFront Access Origin Identity. And we have to provide a caller reference. So this is a unique ID. So in this case, it's given as misfit. And here is just a comment. Now let's hit enter. All right, so if it is successfully created, you should return a JSON back. And it says an origin access identity is created with the caller reference to the misfit, which is a unique ID and the comment, my comment. So let's go to our CloudFront distribution and do a refresh on origin access identity page. See if that is actually created. There we go, it's created. So if I do an edit, you should see the comment that we have added, misfit. And there is this ID, origin access ID, we have to refer in the bucket policy. So just copy this here, or you can copy it from the JSON itself here, and come back to your bucket policy, replace CloudFront origin access identity with that origin access identity ID. So it's now saved. Okay, now our bucket policy is complete. We should push this to our S3 bucket. So let's go to our S3 bucket, MJSON misfit web. Currently, if I go into this and if I go to permissions and bucket policies, right now we don't have any bucket policies, right? So we have to push that bucket policies. So that will be added here. So let's do that using S3 API. So I will copy this command, which you can find it here. Execute following CLI command to add bucket policy to allow CloudFront. Get back to your IDE, clear the screen and paste it. So you have to replace your bucket name. So I will take this out dash dash bucket and replace MJ zone misfit web. So this is my bucket name. And where can I find the policy? So here it has the file reference. So it's referencing website bucket policy dot JSON, which is this file. So let's come back here and hit enter. It seems it is successfully executed. So just to verify that I will go to S3 bucket and s 3 and I will go to misfit web and do a refresh here and go into misfit web mjson misfit web and permission bucket policy. Yeah, so it's updated here. Now we have set up the bucket policy so that only our CloudFront distribution can access this S3 bucket and the content inside that S3 bucket. But we don't still have a CloudFront distribution. So let's go ahead and create a CloudFront distribution. So that is exactly the second steps about. And in this case, we are going to use a CloudFormation script. Now CloudFormation is an infrastructure as code. You can find the CloudFormation of creating a CloudFront distribution in website cloudfrontdistribution.json file. So that is available in our IDE. In module one, AWS CLI, you have website CloudFront JSON. So this is our CloudFormation script. You can see it's a JSON file. Now these are all configuration related to a CloudFront distribution. For example, you can see there is this origins. Now origins are, as we have discussed, the downstream endpoints that CloudFront can communicate. So one of our origin has to be our S3 bucket. So uh, you can see we have to reference our S3 bucket here. So uh, each S3 bucket will come up with a domain name. So it's in the format of bucket name dot S3 dot Amazon AWS dot com. So in this case, we have to replace our bucket name here, which is MJSON misfit dash web. And for that origin, we are setting up an origin access identity. So this is the place we have to again reference our origin access identity ID, which we have created just before. Here, let's replace origin access identity. We have to find that very easy. If you go to origin access identity here and edit. So this is our origin access identity ID. Copy that and replace it here. So what are the other configuration guys? So you have a default cache behavior. So default cache behavior is basically the default path. So this is about basically setting up the default path for the CloudFront distribution. And we are setting up the default path to the origin ID misfit, which is referred in our origin misfit, which is our S3 bucket. So our default path is S3 bucket. So all the requests coming into the CloudFront distribution will be directed to S3 bucket. We can see it in the UI very clearly. So for that, let's execute this CloudFormation script and actually create the CloudFront distribution. You can do that by easily using CloudFront create distribution CLI command. Just copy it here where you can find it on the create CloudFront distribution. Come back here and paste it. 
you don't have to change anything here because it is referencing the file uh, web cloudfront distribution dot json uh, which is this one and hit enter all right so it's successfully created you should get this json response back and we can verify that if you go to your cloudfront distribution and do a refresh and you should see the newly creating cloudfront distribution the status is still in progress in my case it is this one can click on the distribution ID and get into that and now we can verify how our origins and cache behaviors are set up if you go to origins and origin groups you should see there's an origin set up for our s3 bucket and it has attached the origin access identity as well let's click on the origin check it and go hit edit and so you can see this is our s3 bucket domain name and it is using an origin access identity of misfit which is our already created origin access identity here beautiful and furthermore if you go again to our cache behaviors you should see the default path pattern is set out to be our main origin which is s3 so default path pattern means whatever the request that reach cloudfront distribution on any path will be directed to our s3 nice so right now we have successfully configured CloudFront to access S3 bucket and we have set up an S3 bucket and we have set up the bucket policy for the S3 bucket only to accept requests from CloudFront. So this should now work as soon as our CloudFront distribution is created. But there's a one small problem right now our bucket is still empty. We have to put something in there. For that we have to copy the index.html file that is available in the module 1 directory to our S3 bucket. Let's check that. If you open your code editor in the module one, you should see there's a folder called web and there you have this index.html file. So this is a HTML file. We have to copy it into the S3 bucket so that our CloudFront can access it. And let's use AWS S3 copy command. So you can find it in the guide. You can use AWS S3 copy command or AWS S3 sync command. In this case, it's AWS S3 copy and you have to replace it with your bucket name. This part has to be replaced in case MJ zone misfit web. All right. And we are copying the file to S3 AWS S3 copy the file location and the S3 location hit enter. So it says upload successful. If I go to AWS S3 and go to overview of the bucket currently it's showing nothing. If I do a refresh here. Yeah, I should see the index.html. Beautiful. Now look guys. Now if I try to access this file using the direct object URL, you can find the direct object URL here. This is it, object URL. I'll take a new tab and hit enter. You get an access denied. So this is brilliant because we can't access our S3 object directly. But if we try to access it using the CloudFront distribution domain name or the DNS, we should be able to access it. Let's try that. Our distribution is still in progress, but let's try our luck. Click into the distribution and you should see the domain name right here. Just copy that domain name and paste it in and hit enter. Beautiful. So it shows our website. Isn't that amazing? So you can only access our website through the CloudFront distribution URL, but not using the direct S3 URL. The reason is we have only allowed our CloudFront user to access our website and it works like magic. All right, guys, with this, we have concluded our module one implementation and I'll see you in the module two, which is about creating and microservices using AWS Fargate. So first we'll learn all the theory and then we'll move on to implementation as we did today. Thanks.